Well, folks, uh, this is Armin JS. Uh, if you looked at my previous uh, video about the setup, reloading, bench, I basically went over some of the equipment. Now, today, I'm going to actually show you with just uh, two cases here. Uh, these are 308s and I'm just going to basically show you step by step how to do basic simple setup reloading it and uh, and all the steps that go with it now for starters uh, of course uh, this was uh, cleaned already it's not uh, uh, deprimed yet so I'm going to go ahead and deprime it with uh, only decap uh, the priming tool and then I'm gonna <clears throat> clean it with the layman uh, uh, and also I'm gonna put prime on it and then charge it, measure it and then seat the bullets so all these things are gonna happen in about a few minutes so Go ahead and, you know, pay, pay attention and if you need to write something down, go ahead. So, be, because this is basically a normal uh, things that everybody, everyone's going to go through. Anyway, in order to start, I'm just going to use the uh, Lee uh, decapping die, which is basically all it does is just takes the primer out. You don't need to loop anything for this, you don't need to lube it or anything, all it does is takes out the primer. So basically I already set up my uh, decapping die, all you do is just put it, make sure it's a correct shell holder, this is our CBS, so make sure it's a number, number two and then you put it inside. All it, all it does is just decaps it right there. So the next one So once these are decapped, I'm going to go ahead and uh, prep it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, of course I'm going to measure it. So take your caliper, uh, turn it on, set it to zero. This is about two and ten thousands, which is, what you're looking at is two and fifteen thousands, which is fine. It's five thousandths below that. So and this is twelve eleven thousand. So first I'm going to prime it. Uh well prep the cases. I'm gonna stop the video and move it over there. Okay. What we need to do, we need to clean the and uniform the primer pockets in here, okay? And also clean the neck. Uh, since it's, you don't need to trim it, you don't need to use the, the chaffer and the uh, uh, deburring tools in here, but obviously you're gonna, we're gonna use this, this, and this one right here, okay? And, and this one to clean the inside the uniform of the pockets. All right, in order to do that, we start the machine. We're going to clean the pocket. And clean the legs. This is a layman right here, uniform pocket cleaner. All you do is just put it through here and turn it, turn it a few times.
sort of, you have to go through the flash roll, and then all you do is just turn it a couple of times. So basically we're done here. I'm going to turn this off. I don't know if you can... Well, it's clean. Take my word. <laughs> now, we're going to take this out. Let me go back to the press. Sorry about that. Okay. Now, we're going to first take this out. Now I'm going to get ready to put the RCBS uh, full length die for 308. This is the full length die. Uh, the easy way to tell is that the capping, uh, the capping uh, pin is protruding out right now. So what you do is put it in. Turn it until it touches the shell, shell holder, turn quarter, and tie it down. Okay. Now, in order to size this particular one, you guys need to uh, uh, use some kind of a lubrication. I just use uh, redding here. Wait. So, just not much. Okay, take your first uh, case. This thing is fully, fully resized. Next one. Okay. Basically, right now you're finished with the uh, full size die. Next step is to put the uh, cedar. And now, what you need to do, you need to take this out. First, loosen the Allen wrench. And Take the die out, put it back in the box. Now, the next step is, of course, to clean the loop as much as you can from the case. In order to do that, just use a rag. That's why it's recommended not to use so much loop because then you have to clean it. So, might as well just use enough to do the job. You don't need any more.
Okay, basically it's clean now. Make sure you clean it very well. And as much as you can, don't let any uh, loop go inside the neck, this area right here. Okay. Now, what you need to do before you use your powder, you need to put a primer in there. So, in order to put a primer, I'm using a CCI 200 large rifle. 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 <laughs> Just take a couple of them out. Lay them on the floor. Now, the beauty about the uh, RCBS press, which I love very much, is this right here. I know a lot of people uh, use the hand priming tool but I found it very easy to use this particular one because I can basically feel how the primer sits and how deep it is and everything that goes with it. Of course I already have the hand priming tool uh, I already have the hand priming tool which I I like it, I mean, I, 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 if I have a lot of them, then I use those, but for this particular, uh, for uh, accuracy and for uh, making sure everything goes right, I prefer to use this. Also, what you need to do is, you need to uh, take the handle up a little bit and let the uh, hand fall between the gaps in there and it will come out of the uh, flash hole right there. So all you need to do is put the primer in there, okay, take your cartridge, put it inside, it's done. Okay, second one. Basically, these are done. Now it's ready for powder. Charging the powder, okay? Now I'm going to focus the camera on the other side. As you see, that's my RCBS uh, This is my Uniflow, RCBS Uniflow uh, powdering device. Uh, of course, it doesn't come with a stand, so I, I just prepared my own stand in there. So what you need to do, let me take this away. Maybe I should focus the camera. Hold on a second. Okay, I just repositioned the camera. All right, this is my uh, this is my Hornaday scale. I I highly recommend this particular one because it's very easy to calibrate. It always gives me a right uh, consistent measurement, and of course. Um, uh, with the Uniflow, it doesn't come with a baffle. I recommend highly to get the baffle in there because it helps the uh, powder charge to come out consistently. All right, now all you do is just basically I pre-measured the scale, uh, the the scale, so I'm going to measure it to see what it is. 37.2. Well, 
I'm going for a 37 grain. It's 37.1, which is fine. I'm going to take my funnel right here. And once you finish with the, uh, the one that you just put powder in there, move the funnel to the other one, to the empty one. So that way you know you don't get confused which one is which. So, now, these two empty cases are right now ready to be uh, seated. All you need to do is just put a bullet and use the press. However, before prior to that happen, what we went through is we decapped it, we full-sized it, we use the uh, uh, prep tool to clean the powder, the uh, pr primer pocket, uniform, and everything. We clean the neck. Of course, we measure to see if it's the right length, which is uh, with the 308, it should be 2.015. I normally go 2.016 or 7. I don't go any higher than 2.17. So um, I don't trim it. I don't. I try not to trim all the cases just because it's two thousands over. It just you. Just, it's it's not necessary. But if it's more than four or five thousands, you ne definitely need to go ahead and um, trim it. In this case, we didn't have to trim it. Anyway, Okay, right now we're ready to put some bullets in these two babies here, okay? What I'm using right now is a Hornady uh, 168 grain 30 caliber right here, boat tail. Before you start, you need to find out what actual measurement is. So, you go open your book right here. I'm basically going with the OAL, which is uh, the bullet is sitting right on the jive of the uh, rifling. So, uh, so, in order to do that, you need a special tool to measure a rifling. I'm not going to go through that right now, but uh, what I'm looking is uh, 279, well, what I'm looking is 2794. So, overall length after you seat the bullet, it should be 2794 in my case. All the rifles are different, all the bullets are different. Anytime you change your bullet, you need to have a different measurement. You have to take your rifle and put the tool and get a different measurements on that because not every bullet, not every factor, even if it's 168 grain, doesn't necessarily mean that you can't put it on a Sierra or you can't put it on the um, anything else. Uh, so you need to measure that particular bullet with that particular powder and uh, every, everything has to be uh, consistent. Otherwise, uh, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Okay? Anyway, in order to do that, you need to put your uh, sitting die in. So go ahead and I'm going to put this in. You, in order to do that, okay, another thing you need to make sure is you always have to have a flashlight handy. Uh, what, what this does is it confirms that there are powder, there's powder inside the cases. If, you, if you're loading 50 of them, 
that's definitely something you need to look for. You need to go look for them one by one to see, make sure that uh, in case you missed it or you got um, distracted with something, uh, you forgot to put a powder in there. So you have to make sure all the cases have powder in there. And also make sure that you, you're not loaded twice. So basically, just eyeball each one to see if everything is okay before you start sitting the bullets, of course. Anyway, you take your first case, you insert it inside the shell holder, you move it all the way up, and then start turning the die. As soon as it hits the shell holder, that means it's hit, hitting right here, right on the neck right here. Not the shoulders, but right on the neck. Okay? Now, once, I mean, I can't go any further. Now, what I, what I normally do, I don't crimp on the first time I seat the bullets. So in order not to crimp it, you need to turn counterclockwise, maybe a full turn, okay? So basically, find your axis and then just move it full turn. And lock Okay, make sure it's nice and tight. Now this this right here I don't know if you guys, let me zoom in. This right here is the adjustment of the cedar for the bullet. So right now it's on the minimum doesn't go any higher. So all you do is just put the bullets inside. Now, one good thing about the bullets are bolt tail. The bolt tails can easily sit on the neck. You don't have to support it with your fingers or anything. You know, so that's one thing about bolt tails are nice. Now bring it down until it touches the bullet. Now this way you know it's gonna See the bullet. By experience, I already know how much to go down. So, how? What's the distance is? Now, what I'm looking for is two point seven nine four. Zero your caliper. It's 2841. And they go another 70 thousands. I hear sounds. 283. My goal is This one is set.
the case length must be different. That's, that's perfect. 2791 is perfect. 2000 is not going to do anything. More or less. 2792. Okay. This is 2793. This is 2792. So that's, that's perfect. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to crimp it right now. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the uh, Hornady concentricity tool to measure, to make sure I take all the runouts as much as possible. Okay? Okay. Um, I set up my uh, Hornady concentricity tool right now. Uh, what, it, what we need to do is basically what it does is it measures. the concentricity of this area right here right where the jive is on the bullet not the case not the, not the neck not the case but the bullet itself so it sits straight with the axis on the inside of the bore if, if the bullet is sitting this way or a little bit that way off of course, that's going to take away from your accuracy if you're shooting over five, uh, 600 yards. For 100 yards, you don't even need to do this. I mean, it doesn't make uh, any difference if it's off by three, three or 2,000. That's not going to make... What it really helps is if you're shooting a long distance, meaning it's over, I don't know, uh, six, 700 yards, 1,000 yards, things like that. Of course, with a 308, you're not going to shoot a 1,000 yards, maybe uh, 700 yards, but... Uh, you're talking about bigger caliber, 300 Win Mag, Lapula, things like that. Of course, you can go even over 1,000 yards. Anyway, in order to start, what you need to do is... Let me show you how this thing works. Uh, basically, this is uh, the dial. All you need to do is put the bullet inside the cradle like that. Okay? I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me zoom in. Is that... Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. So, the... What's, what's going to happen is going to measure right here. This area right here. So, I'm going to start turning the... the case. I'm going to zero out at the minimum where it starts going up again. So, there. Now, we'll see how good this is. It goes all the way to 3000. And goes back to zero. Now I'm going to attempt to straighten out the bullet. Start dialing, start turning the uh, brass until it, you find the minimum and Well, folks, from about three and a half thousands, now it's only a thousand, which is which is fine. I'm not gonna go anymore. That means this thing is damn straight. <laughs> Anything over three and a half, three thousands, you probably wanna uh, attempt to fix it. 
if it's at 100 yards or 200 yards, you don't necessarily have to fix it, but I'm not going to be shooting this at 700 yards, so 1,000 1, is just perfect, okay? You're not going to ask for any more. Okay, the other one. Start turning it. Turn the dial to zero. This one is about a little bit, well, under three thousand. Under three thousand. So I'm gonna. No, it's two thousand. A little bit more. It's under a thousands right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's under a thousands. Okay. I mean, this is this is this is fine. This is fine. You don't need to mess with it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to crimp this, okay? I'm going to crimp it very light. Because um, if, you, if, you, if you just target shooting and bench rest shooting, you don't necessarily need to crimp it. Because what normally happens is you fired around, you take it out, you put a fresh one manually. You don't put it inside a magazine. But if you go for hunting and you definitely need to crimp it because uh, okay I readjusted the camera now I have to go ahead and crimp this. Now in order to crimp it of course you need to take the seating uh, adjustment all the way up. You don't want to mess with your uh, overall length right now. Just take it all the way up. Okay, until it won't turn anymore. Okay? Now, loosen the Allen wrench. Put the uh, put the case inside the shell holder. Move the ram up. Lower the lower the die until it touches it. Now remember, before we loaded the bullet, I said if you want to crimp it, once it touches the shell holder, just turn another quarter of an inch clockwise. If you don't want crimp, just turn a full full size full turn uh, counterclockwise. So. Nice touching it. Actually, you can't feel it. It all depends on your case length, too. Nice point. I go ahead and lock it. It's too light. <laughs> it's way too light. Way too light. Uh, okay. Yeah, much better. The 
this is where magnifying glass comes in. You guys can check your, see if you like it or not, which is fine. Once you crimp it, turn it 180 degrees and, tr and do it again, so the uniformity won't be lost. That's fine. Well, folks, I don't know how long this video is, but uh, I'm sure it's more than 10 minutes. Anyway, once you guys did this by batches, stages which means that you do all the decapping you do all the prepping cleaning the primer pockets and then once you do is uh, put a fresh primer in there these are all single stages one thing I like about single stages you have full control of what you're doing you can control you can see what's going on you absolutely reduce your mistakes on a progressive process, yeah, it's probably easier, but uh, but you know what? Uh, for accuracy and safety, I think single stage is, I mean, more than enough for for uh, everyday shooting, and uh, it's it's really a. Uh, basically, you won't go you won't go wrong with it. Uh, anyway, uh, for this particular charge, I use the uh, Hodgkin's uh, 4895 with a 37 grain of charge. I'm using a, a 168 uh, grain bullets. What I normally do, I uh, use different manuals and books and I don't really start with the suggested uh, starting grain because you have to look at your velocity uh, sometimes suggested uh, starting grain and the velocity uh, that's not what you want to go so you probably reduce about three percent off of that and then just go up and take it to the range shoot it bring it down look at your groups and basically that's how you're gonna find a nice sweet spot for your rifle Anyway, uh, I hope this was information enough for uh, anyone that wants to start or already started and experienced. And uh, um, next time I'm probably going to do some uh, jive measurement for rifling. I'm going to show you how that actually goes. And that's it. Anyway, thank you and... Uh, have a nice day. Armin JS out.